thickness planing some lumber right now, well actually a whole lot of lumber right now, because I'm getting ready to start a new project building two sets of bookcases. Rather large bookcases, I might add. They're going to present a few challenges in the shop and we're going to have to use a couple of new techniques to get this done. So let's go get started. Alright, this is the sketch that I was given to how the bookshelf should be built. And far be it from me to criticize anybody's sketching capability because I am certainly no better. But let's take a look here. He wants this set of shelves to be four and a half feet tall. That's uh, 54 inches. And he wants them to be five feet in width. He wants this set to be six and a half feet tall and five feet in width, and both sets to be 14 inches in depth front to back. Now the problem is, is he's got three shelves in here, each of those labeled as 18 inches. And three times 18 is 54, and that doesn't take into account the space for the base, the thickness of the shelves in the face frame, or the top. So we had to um, talk through that. I made some actual construction drawings to figure out how I wanted to build this. And I submitted those to him and he approved the plan. So let's take a look at those. All right, now these are by no means fully fleshed out construction drawings, but they do get the dimensions nailed down. Now we've got an overall height of 54 inches because that was a restriction for where the shelves are going to be placed. And what that yielded us with a three and a half inch base is a 17 inch space in the first shelf area, 18 inches here, and this top shelf will have 13 inches of height. Our overall width of the shelf unit is going to be 60 inches, or five feet. And as you can see, when the finished construction is done and the face frame is on and the back is on, this will actually be 15 and a half inches front to back, the depth of the unit. But that will give us 14 and three quarters of an inch of usable shelf space, which was important. So we got this one nailed down. Now for the second one, all I really had to do was just draw this little section right here. Let me show you that. All right, our second set of shelves is the taller set. Originally, he had wanted 18 inch spacing on this first shelf, then 12, 18, 12, and 18. But again, because of the base and the thickness of the shelves, this wound up being 18, 12, 18, 12, and 10 and a quarter for this top shelf. He said that was okay. So we're ready to start going. The next thing we had to do was determine what material to make these shelves out of. When we started talking about what material to use in these bookcases, I made a rather epic mistake and used the word plywood. And I get it, if you're not a woodworker or around this stuff all the time, the word plywood frankly sounds kind of cheap. And if you were to go to a big box store and say, show me some plywood, it would certainly reinforce that impression. Now we all know that we can get hardwood faced better grade plywood. We can use hardwood for trim and face frames and we can make beautiful pieces of furniture using plywood. But I never should have used that word. Well, to make a long story short, these are going to be solid wood bookcases and we're going to build them out of this soft maple. Now soft maple is easy to work. 
it's relatively less expensive than some of the other wood, hardwoods that are on the market. And oftentimes it has beautiful grain patterns. So that's what we're gonna use. Now I've got over 120 board feet of soft maple and I've been milling this for days now. What I've gotten down to is four boards here that are just a smidge over one inch thick, just three sixty-fourths of an inch larger than one inch in thickness. I'm gonna use these boards for the bottom shelf close to the base of both of these bookshelves. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the unit to be really, really sturdy and I'd like it to be a bit more bottom heavy. Now, we'll still need to attach these shelves to the wall because these are going in a kid's room and you don't want to take any risk of the bookcases turning over if they were to climb on them or something. But still, I want to use these thicker boards. All the rest of the stock will be milled to three quarters of an inch thick. Let's take a look at how I have arranged the boards that I'm milling and how I've sorted out to get them into the right positions for this project. To start, I've got four pieces of wood up here labeled sides A and B. I've made sure that the wood is sort of the same color nature, similar grain pattern, because these will be edge glued together in pairs and they'll form the sides of the shorter bookcase unit. We want those to look really good. Same thing with sides C and D. These will be forming the sides of the taller cabinet. This piece is just kind of an extra, but look at that beautiful piece of wood, some gorgeous grain in that. These four boards will be also edge glued together in pairs to form the tops of the bookcases. Now, the reason I've designated the tops is because two of these boards have some flaws on one face and the other face looks pretty good. So I want to put those two boards with flaws in them, edge join those, turn the flaws up, and put those as the top of the taller shelf unit. No one will ever see that and the bottom face, which is inside the cabinet, will look really good. Then all of this stock over here will be edge glued together to form the various shelves inside the unit. So let's go now and glue up those base pair units for the first bottom shelf in both of the bookcase units. These are the first two boards for edge gluing to form the first base bottom shelf in the first shelving unit. And remember, these are slightly over one inch thick boards. And this board here, while there is no rock, it's perfectly square, it's been jointed, it's been planed, it's been thicknessed, but it does have a very slight bow. And you can see it if you look close. In fact, if you put these together, you'll see there's a little shadow line, but if I push this down, it lines up perfectly. Now, I'm not worried about that. What we're going to do is we're going to use the Festool Domino. We're going to cut domino mortises along the edges of both boards, and we'll use dominoes in those mortises that will bring this together during the glue up so that my edge just literally disappears. You know, you could use dowels or you could use biscuits. Either of those choices are just fine for this purpose to give you that alignment during the glue up process. Remember, while you might be able to put some clamps edge to edge down here and down here to hold those level, it's going to be really tough to get a clamp in the middle here. You could use a call across it, but I just prefer to use the dominoes. It's quick, it's fast, it adds a little additional strength. And more importantly, it makes that alignment go real easy. So let's cut those dominoes, see how that process goes, and let's glue up these two boards. To cut our Festool domino mortises, the first thing that I'm doing 
is making little tick marks here along the board so that I'm sure to get my mortises in the same place on both boards. The other thing that I did was I set my combination square for half of the thickness of the board and then I used that to set the depth down from the fence so that I get the mortise at exactly half the thickness of the board. Now to make sure though, I want to cut these from the same exact face, meaning I want to turn this board around and cut my mortises from this side. Now if you recall, this is the board over here with a little bit of bow, so I'm going to push down on that really hard when I make those mortises. But the key here is to push down on this fence really tight on the board. So this pair is now ready to glue up. Okay, I've got these uh, set up now. Clamps are ready and I'm ready to pour on some glue. Now, I'm, I don't typically put glue in the Festool Domino uh, slots. I may slop a little in there here and there, but uh, I don't really find it to be of much additional value. And I prefer to not put a super heavy coat of glue on on one surface, but instead to put a relatively thin coat of glue on both surfaces. I think I get a little bit less squeeze out that way. I'll spread that on there. Got it really a little too thin there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now
Okay. Our line has all but disappeared here. Our bow in that board, gone. This is the show face, so I'm going to get off all the squeeze out that I can. Less sanding to do later, although I will need to remove my pencil marks. And that looks pretty good. Now just to assure that it's flat, you can lay a rule across it. The most often reason for not being flat is over tightening the clamps. You can over tighten the clamps and it will actually cause the uh, glue up to a bow. So in the middle. So if you don't over clamp then you're in good shape. And all you really need to do is just make a nice firm contact um, and the glue will set up and be just fine. And the joint looks super tight. So this is great. While that first glue up is setting up, I'm going to go back to thickness planing. I figure I've got to make about three more passes on these boards till I get them down to three quarters of an inch thick. Then I'll joint two edges and edge glue all of the pairs up. And in the next video, we're going to start cutting the dados and the rabbits. And because these boards are so big and so wide, I'm going to cut them with a router using a guide rail as a straight edge. So be sure to come back for that. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. And thank you for watching this one.